Continue, of course, our Friday uh, conversation with Bryn Linda Q. I just want to welcome as well Chef Ngamareling Nyembe, who's making sure that while we have this beautiful conversation, we get to taste beautiful food, beautifully presented, tasting delicious. <laughs> Chef, thank you for your time. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. It's great to have you. And I mean, I want to talk about what we have in front of us. I've already tasted. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't resist. Uh, but what's in front of us, Chef? This looks absolutely amazing. It tastes great as well. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, in front of you, you have our starter, mm -hmm. which is a broccoli puree with lentils and micro veggies. And, and, and this looks very healthy. I yes. have to say. So, so anyone... We're trying to keep it healthy. We're trying to keep it healthy. Yeah, I know you're doing the <laughs> utmost. So, so usually this is the starter that you would have. How important is presentation? Because I keep complimenting you on how... Well, presentation is it's key from the word go. Because mm. now we eat with our eyes before you can actually taste. So if you can say it looks good, mm -hmm. clearly you have to taste it. Right. Yeah. So we're also going to have other stuff which yes. I don't want to get into right now. You're also going to... Show us, I suppose, as you know, as the we conversation go, yes. goes along. But thank you so much, Chef. This looks absolutely amazing. We're going to be in touch, of course, with uh, Chef and Gamreling as well. Uh, as I talk to Brent, Brent, I want to talk about a very important issue in South Africa, gay rights. Yes. What's your overall uh, sort of, um, I don't know, uh, uh, sort of understanding of how gay rights currently are positioned in South Africa and whether or not people do actually understand them, uh, they do abide by them, they yeah. do respect them. What's your understanding right now? What's your view? So it's the perfect time to speak about this. We've just come out of Global Pride Month. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the 1st of July, so we've just finished that. And, and it's a reminder, I think, um, to have important conversations yeah. like these. Uh, South Africa was one of the first countries in the world uh, to, to give uh, the LGBTQIA plus community mm. equal rights uh, back in 1996 within our constitution, uh, which was written into our constitution. Yeah. But the reality is today uh, where we stand, um, even though the rights are there, there is a whole portion of the gay uh, sort of population in South Africa that suffer yeah. greatly. Yeah. Um, it, it starts off in, in the schooling sort of system with bullying. Um, in primary school, I was bullied for being different. Mm. Uh, one of the questions that, that, or a quote that has popped up uh, now that I'm an adult is, how do kids that are seven or eight have an understanding that someone else is different? Right. And why is there hatred towards that difference? Mm. Where does that come from? Yeah. Um, and what comes from that is, is hate is a learnt behavior and hopefully something that can be unlearnt, hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it starts off in, in schooling and even in the workplace, there's bullying, there's harassment. Mm. It can be given that mm. title as homophobia. Mm. We have um, terrible, terrible uh, situations in South Africa where we've, we've got corrective rape, mm. uh, which is just absolutely shocking. Yeah. Um, we have... Uh, 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 people fighting with each other when it comes to homophobia and then we have families who, who send their kids to the conversion camps um, so where are our rights we have them right um, but but there's still a long way to go with society to work towards equality for everyone I agree I feel like the bullying uh, as you've mentioned has become so brazen even on social media it's almost yeah. as if we're not hiding behind just troll accounts uh, we are saying it brazen uh, just as, 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 as harshly as it is on social media are there also is there a problem of enablers as well do you think uh, because I, I think if someone writes a homophobic tweet for example on social media and there's a retweet and you we, we sort of expand on that and yeah. what's your sentiment on enablers of yep. homophobia? So two things here. One, social media has become an echo chamber. Right. So, so we'll, we'll say something and the, the algorithms and the AR will show us more of what it thinks we want to see. So if I go, oh, you're queer and you, that's a, a sort of slanderous thing to say mm. to you, there'll be more people that will see that and I'll see more of it. Right. Um, so that's the first thing. The, se the second thing is um, I actually got called out a, a couple of weeks ago. I put, I put a picture of my dogs. I've got three Cavalier King Charles. Right. The gayest dogs you can get. So right. They're so cute. <laughs> and um, and they just had a beautiful bath uh, they, the the company comes to my house yeah. and baths them yeah. and put on the cutest little like bows around their necks and I took a photo and some guy quoted my tweet a random person who I don't know who doesn't follow okay. me quoted my tweet and went ooh even the dogs or even the gays are making their dogs gay mm. and I replied to him and I said to him before blocking him I replied That's important. I, I replied to him and I said first of all I'm um, calling me gay doesn't hurt my feelings 
It's what I am. Right. I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of right. who I am. And secondly, being a bully in 2022 is embarrassing. You need to sit down. Mm. Like, you need to sit down. That's a fact. And, and so many people back me up because that was my echo chamber. My social media is a space where people I engage with and I interact with are positive, are kind, yeah. and are just humans. Mm. They're just nice to each other. Yes. Um, but there are enablists, and there are people that, uh, that will form their own echo chambers of hate, and it's incredibly sad, and I'll say this again, mm -hmm. it's embarrassing in 2022. Yeah. I also want to talk about, you mentioned humanity, how to, it's important to be human first. Um, depression in the gay community, how rife is it, Brent? Huge. Just paint a picture for us. I mean, if the, this is what you know, most people in the LGBTIQ plus community deal with on a regular basis, uh, yeah. basis privately, publicly, in family spaces, uh, friends, when they go out shopping, surely there should be a problem, a deep problem rooted in depression. So I am incredibly lucky. Um, I'm 37 years old and I have had the greatest support system around mm. me. My parents, my grandparents, yeah. uh, my family members, my friends, teachers, uh, people around me have always supported me for who I am. Mm. And they've never made me question. When I came out, I, I never questioned if, if I was wrong or if I had gotcha. to be ashamed of who I was. Yeah. With that said, I mean, I, I put up a post the other day where I did a physical count. I think I've lost 20 friends to suicide mm. um, at my age. Yeah. And it's because people have made them feel less than. People have made them feel like they're not good enough. Right. And, and humanity, we are all the same. Um, the, I, you want rights as a straight person, but you don't want to give them to other people. Mm. We need to share the rights for everybody, mm. right? Mm. And I think maybe the other side of that is we need to realize my normal is not the same as your normal, yeah. and that's 100% okay. Yeah. As long as it's not illegal, as long as it's not hurting anybody, it doesn't impact you in any way. Right. Like, love is love. Love is love. I, I, but also, do you think there's enough support for the community? I'm talking in terms of policy, uh, yeah. awareness campaigns, conversations in mainstream media, um, you know, those who will help to call out the hate yeah. on social media and say, whether this is my sexual preference, I, we will not do it on my watch. Yep. Um, this is wrong. Wrong is wrong. Do you, do you think there's enough support? There'll never be enough support. And that goes for anything where there is a challenge in South Africa. If we look at GBV, we need more men standing up and saying it's a problem, right? Mm. So it's the same in the gay world. Mm. Um, we need more people standing up and saying it's a problem. With that said, I reported on a beautiful story yeah. uh, in 2020 of this little kid who was being bullied. Mm. Uh, his name is Ethan, and I eventually called him Ethan the Brave. Yeah. And, um, and he was being horribly bullied. That The kids were actually following him home from school to, to throw rocks at his house. And his mom texted me or emailed me and just said, please help, like what do I do? Uh, you're, you're in the gay community, you have this profile, what is it that I can do to help my son? And I wrote a story about it, I asked her if I could, I didn't mention any names, okay. but I wrote a story about it and to tell you the people that came out in their thousands, really? there, were, there were these massive uh, like staunch bikers that wanted to um, follow him to school. There were, there were people that were inviting him to come to his school, yeah. uh, to their school, uh, same age group, like eight, nine mm -hmm. years old, to show them what true friends can be like. There were parents saying that they would stand up and help him in any way. Mm. So is there, is there support? Yes. Is there enough? Never. There can always be more. There can always be more. Always be and more. Pride Month, uh, a Pride uh, as, as a day uh, to celebrate, to raise these issues, doesn't yeah. help. Yeah. yeah, of course it helps. Right. Um, I, I wrote a, an opinion piece about, uh, we laugh because there's some brands that jump onto the Pride wagon. I've like seen Listerine. that. Listerine brought out a Pride mouthwash. How funny. Why I've do we need a Pride I've mouthwash? Seen that. I've seen that. And it is funny, but at the same time, it's, it's beautiful. Mm. So the letters LGBTQIA plus stand mm. for many things, right? Mm. Mm. And the A can be for asexual. It's got a couple of different terms. Okay. But I like to say the A also stands for ally. And the ally is maybe the most important letter in what we call the alphabet mafia. Gotcha. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most important letter <laughs> right, because right. the more allies we have, yeah. the more we realize that we belong, we, the more that we realize that our normal is okay, and, and the more we can, we can be ourselves and be our true selves, mm, which is a beautiful mm, thing. Mm. What's the ally's job? What's but, their role? So I think their role is support, as we say, yeah. and to stand up and call out when things are wrong.
When, when, when you see a situation, even if it's in your WhatsApp group, we, we talk about locker room chats, right? Mm. When it's in your WhatsApp group and someone makes an inappropriate joke that makes you feel uncomfortable, call that person out. That's, that's a way to start a conversation and also to show that you are an ally. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's about support and it's about being there for each other and, and not making anybody in this world feel less than. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm enjoying this and I, and I appreciate you coming on here and talking about this and hopefully this can definitely go viral and circular because we do need uh, more allies and be more human uh, in a day and age where it seems to be less. All right, we're still going to stick around with Brent Linda Q and Chef Ngamareleng Inyembe tasting some delic delicacies and I also saw a cake and I'm just like, my hips are going to lie <laughs> this weekend after this cake. I'm looking to dig in nonetheless, but before I do that... Here's